Welcome to the Tuesday Diamond Network show, Alternative Voices of the Alternative World. This is December 5th, 2016. A new year is upon us. And tonight we're going to discuss issues surrounding life, aging, uh, alternative ways of handling elder care, not not to get too deeply into anything medical, but just just we just want to see life be better for all of us, including our elders, and I'm an elder myself. <laughs> and we don't you know, we recognize that in this current society a lot of times the elders just get pushed away into nursing homes and to care elder care homes and just forgotten about and we don't want that anymore because elders have the wisdom that we all need. And this has been the case in so many cultures in the past that have been, I mean, Native American cultures and many other cultures. So with all that in mind and heart, I'm going to evoke the law of one. And the law of one will be just surrounding all people, all phases of life, the life, the great life cycle and all of those that are entering the elder years, that the joy of the spirit will continue to shine and shine even brighter as we are becoming just so much wiser and so much brighter from our experiences and it's just so much deeper. So with all that in heart, I'm going to evoke the love one So, we are all one. When one is harmed, all are harmed. When one is helped, all are helped. And I am one with all there is. Therefore, I ask in the name of who I am that only that which serves the greater good of all happen here and now and throughout all time and space. We give thanks for this be done, and so it is. Blessed be. And we are now in the new year, according to the Gregorian calendar, 2016. And there's been a lot has been said on the Diamond Network about the possibility of immortality in the physical body. we, We can hold these visions out there and rejuvenation of our bodies and all these kinds of things. It's just it's a wonderful thing to to just consider the possibilities thereof. At the same time there are people in this world that are many, many people in this world that are in their elder years and uh, really need the respect that they deserve. The respect and the caring and the honoring And uh, I recently saw an article on Facebook about these, um, you know, we've had granny cottages for a while, but now these are called granny pods. It's an idea where where an elder grandmother, grandfather can be in a home right on the same property where their, their children are, that they would have all the facilities there of of a hospital room plus, you know, greater aestheticism, of course, greater aesthetics and in beauty and, you know, not just, even though it would be sterile and necessary, it would it would have, you know, plants and and just beauty, you know, thing organic, more organic in nature, but would still have the um, monitors that you know, they were needed for monitoring the heart and other organs and et cetera, et cetera. So that was just one thing that, that came up for me in the past week, and I saw that on the Internet, and I thought that was interesting because I I just spent some time in a nursing home, and they did, uh, the people there did have some good care from an allopathic point of view, yet, you know, it's still not quite the environment would be most conducive to to just, feeling like they are somebody. You know, they really are somebody and they're being respected for who they are. So, um, anybody else want to jo- want to have anything to say about this um, this topic? And 
we'll just have an open discussion this evening. Uh, so, uh, Sonny, one one thing when you decide when you mention it on Facebook, uh, the the focus of the program this evening, uh, I, I thought about about the intentional community movement and and uh, I, I thought about the uh, fellowship of intentional communities and I, and I think the one thing is really important and I'll mention it to Neil because he's he's been connected with that organization for a long time that when when you when they're describing that. Your, the communities and the directory, they should have a, a, a section where it just says age groups, and they, mm-hmm. you know they and say if your age groups nine to ninety nine, that means that it's uh, senior citizen friendly, and mm-hmm. uh, you know and the the uh, in the intentional community movement, I think uh, and, I, and I'm I'm going to work on this uh, is to is to how how to serve the elderly and uh, you know and there's a, the, the caveat here is that the, the the condition of the elderly in this system is when they reach an uh, the, uh, the old elder years there's a, a little bit of health problems that, are, that ensue because of, because of the way that people live here and this has to go to old age in the future because I think I think a lot of these maladies that are affecting us here and now as the elderly and in the community in the future, uh, they're, 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 you're, you're going to be, have a healthier old age because the, the, whole, the whole process of living is healthier. And you know, we're not going to be doing so much damage to our bodies, uh, and uh, they, they'll last a lot longer. And, uh, and in the meantime, uh, if you can, within these intentional communities, if you, if there's a, a, a way to, uh, for the elderly to live there and, and, you know, and blend in with the community and, and, the, and the community has the, the services available to care for that elderly community, you know, uh, there's a, there, there's has a spirit of volunteerism and support and, and, uh, you know, uh, and, and association, and they're making sure that they're, they're the, there's participation by everybody, and uh, that, that's something that, that has has to be worked on because right now some of the age limits and are kind of restricted because they specify you know uh, uh, a certain age age groups or mentality or physical condition. And that you know excludes the elderly as a, as a as a whole. You know there may be that individual that, that can do that, but it doesn't. Just because I'm I'm not years old doesn't mean I can I can uh, be of use and, and be of value in the community. You know, and um, it's a it's a it's a, a spot a space that really needs to be worked on. So that so so these uh, you know it's an inclusiveness and includes everyone. Yeah. As a part of that uh, of the community. Oh, I agree. Yes, I. That's a very good idea. I haven't um, checked that site for that sort of topic. I sh- should have done that before the show started. But, but yes, um, yes. Yeah, so many, so many communities are geared towards younger people and people with loss of energy. But of course, we need we need all the age groups together. And, well, you know, a, it, yeah. At the, at the road unwinds, all these young kids in all these intentional communities are suddenly going to grow very old, and they're mm-hmm. going to be surrounded with their peers and say, "Gee, where are all the young people?" <laughs> <laughs> well, if if we continue to have feral young people, then there'll be some new ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As long as yeah, there'll be some. New generations coming along, but yeah, just yeah, um, it's it's a it's part of the holistic way of life as I see it, and they and, and they can, yeah, they can they can be out if they you know, I'm say they, but I'm I'm one myself, you know, being outside if we're able to, you know, and being close to the earth, and um, just doing whatever we can, you know, with. If we can be close to plants, just plants are so healing. Just being around them, trees and things like that. Uh, so I mean, irony, yeah. there's a bit of irony in this because if you look at 
uh, you know, the, the elderly people in a way have done it to themselves because they've got these exclusive communities for only people for over 55. And mm -hmm. they say, well, I don't want kids around me and I don't want this around me and I don't want that around me. Well, be careful for what you wish for because, you know, in reality, you need all, all the, the – so you have to have a, a, a balance, you know. You have to have new, new kids coming in and, uh, and uh, middle-aged people and young people and old people and all kinds of people, you know, to, uh, for the garden to be healthy. And I, I bet, I bet in the final analysis, if you look at these communities that, that have an exclusion as far as an age group, that they're not going to be, they're not going to endure because it, it doesn't, it doesn't follow the course of, of the natural order of things, you know? No, yes, and all the um, indigenous tribes around the world, they didn't just separate the elderly off. They're all families together. So, so this, I, is, yeah. this is a good subject because it's it's really the glue that's that's going to hold everything together, you know? Uh, I, I had personal experience. My my when my dad got divorced, my grandmother, and she raised uh, 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 ten kids. And she, when she was seventy two, she came up to Alaska and raised raised us. You know, and uh, and I that that just uh, you know I, I, the way to describe it was like a, you know the sun coming into the living room. It's just that unconditional love and all that. All that wisdom, yeah. all you know, and and, and uh, you know, I, I'm a kid that likes to eat. And grandmother, raising ten kids, she she loved to cook. So we were buddies, you know. <laughs> I, we were, you know, I I held on onto her skirt, and I just you know waited to see if all for all this magic she produced, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just a, it was a it was an experience that really taught me. Uh, you know about how important uh, you know grandparents uh, play mm -hmm. in, in things, and uh, as well as parents. You know, you, you, the elderly are a vital, vital part of uh, of uh, a good, healthy life. Right. Yeah. That's that's been passed down through the generations. The idea of grandma's cooking and all of that. It sounds old-fashioned to many people now, but. But yeah, it's it's pretty wholesome actually, as long as they're eating wholesome food. But in the old days, food was whole, more wholesome anyway, for the most and I, part. She was as much help to dad as 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 she was to us kids, because he mm -hmm. was you know he, he would sometimes get on a on a a, a rant and uh, she would say, oh, "Vinny, come on, uh, you know that's not right," and he, and you know it's like. It's having a, like having a little uh, gentle policeman around, you know, that uh, kind of kind of keeps things uh, sane. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's sad when families are get split up, you know, and because for well, in terms of for any one reason or another, you know. But I, I feel that if um, it's largely a function of the dysfunctional way of life that's been been oh. predominant, predominant, you know, that, that they're just, that they aren't getting along and they have, you know, they, people aren't learning how to, how to really be together and work out, work things out. And, uh, and then sometimes they just go away. They, you know, they go somewhere else because they, they aren't able to have a harmonious relationship with their family. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of, in, in, in Europe where you have a, a, a bit of more history and tradition, you know, it, the common thing is, is to have three or four generations living mm -hmm. in the same house. You know, it's just, it's mm -hmm. just normal. Yeah, yeah. I see that in a lot of cultures. Just the grand, you know, the great grandparents and the grandparents and all the way down. So, yeah, so we're just looking at, um, Ways to bring life back into a more organic whole, I guess you'd call it whole, or way of yeah. life, full, full circle, you might say. You know, yeah. it's full circle, just like my friend in Oregon has this full circle church, uh, full circle family church. I was corrected about that. <laughs> but 
in any case, you know, it, it's just there's a lot of full circles happening right now. <laughs> Things are just yeah. coming around in their cycles, you know, and in our lives in so many different ways. I've been noticing that. If uh, you know, I've noticed in the, uh, uh, those those uh, communities that are inclusive uh, that uh, that are thriving. That they, they, you know, when they have their brochures or have their uh, pictures posted on, uh, or their, they post their newsletters, there's a there's, there's a wide variety of age groups. You know, there's a, I see a lot of a lot of elderly, a lot of kids, a lot of a lot of young uh, uh, young and married couples. Uh, so where 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 things are really happening. You know that that component of having uh, the elders in the community is it's it's part of it. You know, mm-hmm. right? And and if the elders don't have to be inundated twenty four hours a day by the kids either, and yet they they certainly can have their their space, their their little cottages or their rooms or whatever it is. You know, they can have peace and quiet and they want it. Yeah. But it's just, you know. yeah. Yeah, so they they can have their space and they're quiet, and I I can totally relate to that because I like to have my space and my quiet. But but then the the, the family's always there, you know that it's there, and the kids are taught respect. Now that's that's something that's that's really important, especially in these times. That the yeah, kids but... have respect for their elders, you know, not that they bow down and and you know or. You know, in terms of they, they are taught to be all they can be and be creative and all of this kind of thing. But they, they do, they are taught to respect their elders. And that's just, just an important aspect in their elders' needs. And, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 a, I'm living it, really, in my household because I have a six-month-old granddaughter. And because of uh, her mother going to school full-time and working full-time and uh, she's really busy, She's spending a lot of time with me and and my wife, and mm. she she she'll be in her mother arm her mother's arms, and the little baby will be looking at me, you know. Mm. Well, that's not yeah. You have a firsthand experience of being a grandpa. So bond, you can see well. Can you in, in small communities where these you know grandparents are, are in, interacting with their grandchildren and spending time and bonding uh, mm. that. You know that uh, that that's gonna you know as long as I'm alive it's gonna it's gonna grow you know and uh, and that 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 lot that's what I meant by the the glue that holds the the world together you know it's just a, a, a love and unconditional love and patience and tolerance yeah. and all all the qualities that you have to have to to make to make life really successful and and flourish. <laughs> Right, you have to have patience and tolerance to to live in a family or live in a community, and, and good communication skills and willingness to to hear what the other people are yeah. their concerns to hear and not get on somebody's just ego ego trip, so yeah. to speak. You know, just just yeah, to remain, you know, keep that childlike spirit of 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 uh, uh, wonderment and uh, mm-hmm. uh, and and. And excitement and interest, you know, about gee, what? Oh, look what that person's doing, you know. I see my uh, granddaughter; she's just really enthusiastic about being alive, you know. Yeah, uh, just, yeah. Just, just, just the fact that she can be there and be mm-hmm. conscious of our surroundings and and be a part of everything. Well, we can all we can learn from the children, that, you know that carry that spirit through all our lives that so many people get just jaded and just oh you know the light just gets dimmed and I think of the Pink Floyd song that's oh, shine on you crazy diamond you know that, that now there's a look in your eyes like black holes in the sky you know and, and it, it's sad that people that get into such negative places in their lives you know, they're kind of lost their soul, you know, but they can get it back. The, 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 the system beats the humanity out of you, you know. It just yeah. it's turn, it breaks the light bulb. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it's like 
that, that song came to mind because of the, the diamond aspect. <laughs> Shine on you crazy diamond. It's like, like a child who's just so present. You know, and sometimes when we get older, we get that back if, if we're open. You know, the best yeah, thing, of course, is to, to never lose it, <laughs> to never lose it throughout your life. But, but yeah, um, all all that should that should be it, it should just be gradually getting brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, no uh, no volt drop. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> some some souls seem to have to go through some pretty horrendous experiences, and some don't even they they leave their bodies because of that. But they, you know, I think of a lot of the the rock musicians, and you know, died from drug overdoses and stuff, but they they seem to have to live such an intense, such intensity, you know, and, and maybe that's what their soul needed, but, you know, it seemed to take them out at an early age. People like, um, of course, Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin and Jim Morrison and if you, you look, know. if you look at their, the, the way those people were managed, and you can even look at, look at people like uh, Whitney Houston and uh, mm-hmm. What happens? And they, they 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 get managed and they get hyper managed, and they have to mm-hmm. appear at this mm-hmm. concert, and sign these contracts. Oh, and yeah. they're going to get sued, and they just get worn mm-hmm. out. And so, so and so, so pressure, yeah. somebody comes along and says, "Well, listen, uh, just uh, just take this. Or you got to appear. Just take this, and this will perk you up a little bit." And then. Oh, sure. and then and then they do that, and then you know, two o'clock in the morning, and then somebody says, "Well, I, they say I, I can't go to sleep." And they say, well, just take this, and this will help you go to sleep. And the next, you know, and the yeah. next thing you know, addicted to uppers and downers, and in between, oh. alcohol on top of that, and and then uh, you know, a lot of this, I don't think it's suicide. I think they're just bodies. They've got so many chemicals in their system, they oh, just, yeah. just expire. You know? Sure. Yeah, they burnt. They burnt themselves out. <laughs> That's it's an interesting fact that several of these musicians did did go out at age twenty seven. The, the artists artist that endure take control of themselves and they say, Look at mm-hmm. I'm not gonna do two matinees on Sunday, I'm gonna do a performance yeah. on Friday and Saturday and I'm yeah. not gonna do one next week, I'm gonna do one in two weeks. I'm gonna have time for myself and and they and they and they're balanced, uh, you know. But the yeah. but the ones that you know, the ones that aren't strong enough to do that. And I, yeah, I even uh, was in the process of writing a letter to some of the executives of the uh, the, the uh, music companies. They could put a stop to it and just have a, a zero mm-hmm. tolerance where drug use is concerned, and and also uh, they have a responsible management clause that the uh, re- entertainers can only. Uh, uh, rehearse and and, uh, and perform only so many hours a week. Period. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that, yeah. that 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 protects that would protect our trust of our our treasure. You know of all our all the great artists that have died mm-hmm. prematurely. You know. Right. Right. I mean. I mean. It was an intense time they were in, but at the same time they were being used by their handlers, so to speak. I guess it sounds like they're squeeze out as much life force as they can and just get in as many concerts as they can and make as much money as they can from them and but well, it just it's uh, it's 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 now they 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 used to make their money in album sales, right? Yeah. And they could just well, their album sold. But now that the internet has come along, uh, it's 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 swept that 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 lump of profit away. They don't make their money on, on say, mm-hmm. album sales. They, they really are uh, the only avenue for them to really make real income is live performances. So you know that's uh, that just that mm-hmm. adds fuel to the fire because that puts more pressure on them physically. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'm not as much in touch with what's going on in these days with the musicians, but that that is true. That is true. Um, in the 60s, they still had albums, and they still had album sales and all, but it was, a, it was just a yeah, big time. You know, you know. Tower Records <laughs> went, out, uh, went bankrupt. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, all these, all these uh, markets for their 
talent where they they could sell albums and make money and and go relax for a while, but that's not the case now. Mm-hmm. It's actually gotten more extreme. Yeah, in terms of I guess what their managers want from them, but yeah, but you know the, some of these um, musicians from the '60s, you know the the energy was so intense. You know, it's intense now in a different way. I mean, we're we're in this time of transformation, when, and we were then too. So yeah, another well. level of transformation. Yeah, but but then again, we were talking about elders, and it's interesting that um, we we in the hippie times, we didn't have, we didn't very few of us had elders <laughs> that had gone through what we went through. You know, to to kind of get it. Yeah. Well, I, I, I had the uh, I had the uh, virus. I, you know, I figured, uh, when I was like uh, 20 years old, 22, 23, I said, "Well, uh, any, any, you know, don't listen to anybody over 30." <laughs> oh yeah, yes, I remember that. Yeah, don't trust I, anybody over 30. Yeah. <laughs> but and, yeah, <laughs> because at that time we saw our parents and the older people as those that were. And they were in a box, you know. They were square. They were they weren't liberated like we were at all. You know, it was a real we called it a generation gap. But, and I, uh, I, I was drawn into the uh, the, uh, the Indian culture, and then it was it was uh, it reawakened in me how important what a part, important role the elders played. So that was mm-hmm. I, I only had that for that syndrome for a brief period, and then it yeah. Was, well, my dad and my uncle went to Hopi land, and then they saw where the elders were. With the, you know, basically the elders were the council, and the, uh, all the mm-hmm. tribe members would 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 give their peace. But ultimately, the 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 old folks had to decide uh, what the what a, what the given course would be. Uh, after all the uh, all the uh, everybody expressed their opinion, you know, and I said, well, yeah, that's that, that, well, that makes sense, and I. You know, I was I, I was grounded with my grandmother's upbringing, so that was there was always a warm feeling there, and I uh, I, I don't think I was I, I you know I certainly mouthed the idea, but I don't think it was in my DNA, you know. <laughs> in your DNA to do what yeah. to be in a Just tribe. <laughs> I've been in everybody over thirty, you know. Oh was, yeah. I, I mouthed the idea, but I didn't. I didn't embrace it in my, you know, I didn't take it to heart. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, I didn't. My my parents were ex- different people. Every time I turned around, there was somebody 55 that I really, really liked. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, me too, because I I really respected my parents and their, you know, their spirituality, and, and they were they were ahead of so many other people, especially of their generation, in being vegetarians and eating in the eating organic foods much more than most people did in those days and so and they went to chiropractors. They were they were into alternative medicine to some degree. So, you know, they were they were part of the way there to where we got it, it was all it was all to my six year old uncle that was well that would well when I turned around he was saving my bacon, you know, so I, <laughs> it was it was kind of a uh, folly, you know, of an idea. But anyway, it was certainly in the ether at that time. You know, when you're finished, if you're over 30, forget about it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because most people's parents were, you know, just caught up in the old, we would call it the, the old society, you know, the establishment. Let's call it the establishment. Well, it was, uh, you know, in the WASPy, it says turn around and begin anew. And boy, that was that was certainly the uh, trend uh, in the '60s, you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that yeah. was yeah, that was what's been predicted for so long, and actually, a waspy more did predict it in a certain way, you know. Yeah. It was the the you know, towards Cosman, you know, it, it happened in phases, but that was a really big phase, you know. That was a big breakthrough time, and. Uh, had its fallout, which everything does, but when it was, it was, it's kind of funny because it's a, it says turn around and begin anew and abandon you know the past, but 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 please listen to these gods that are several hundred thousand years old. 
<laughs> yeah, if we, can, if we can hear them. <laughs> yeah. We have to be discerning about who we listen to also, you know. You know, that, that it's, uh, there's so many voices out there. But, you know, sure. even, like, yeah, the spiritual, all the spiritual paths that everybody got on, you know, different, different explorations and even when it became you know not su- such a healthy thing you know where the gurus were taking advantage of disciples and things like that it, those yeah, well, that got been, through it yeah those that got through it learned from it <laughs> you know there was, there was there was a certain certainly anybody with a beard and an orange robe uh, could mm-hmm. you know uh, the uh, young people could Fall prey to him. He had to. He had to wait through the the charlatan and really get to the to the ones that really were were sincere mm-hmm. and real. You know. I, so. Yeah, I believe that Ron Das was one of those real sincere ones. You know, yeah. you may not agree with every all of his philosophy, but he. I've seen him. I saw a DVD on his life. He's a glowing soul, so full of love. You know, I I really uh, have a lot of respect for him. Even though, you know, I never followed him, so to speak. You know, I didn't go to his ashram or anything like that. But, yeah. And uh, there were were a lot of, uh, in this this age, you know, our our truth, uh, there are truth seekers were people like uh, like Gandhi and Martin Luther King and, and, uh, you know, the, and the uh, uh, and even up to date, you know, I I I, I hold up uh, Bishop Tutu and uh, Nelson Mandela, you know, that they mm-hmm. they stuck to the principles of loving your enemy and forgiveness and mm-hmm. and uh, and and that that comes with that can only come with age and wisdom. That doesn't happen when you're, you know, yeah. when you're, usually when you're really young because it just it takes a lot of understanding to. Go through prison for 27 years and then come out wow. and with that with that attitude. Right. Well, he was a strong soul to to go through that and come out of it and and uh, read after he came out. I mean, he was obviously meant to do what he did, but he's a, definitely a strong soul. Yeah, and, and you know, is well. yeah. These are, there are there are examples, you know, in every age of these men who stick to the principles and and, and live by them, you know. Mm-hmm. Men and women, you know, Mother Teresa. Right, right, yeah. right. Got to bring in the women. The sets and a lot of women to be admired. And you know, I, uh, I I really do believe Oprah Winfrey is really sincere about mm-hmm. wanting to. Yeah, help people and do things, you know, mm-hmm. and Melinda Gates, and you know, there's a, there's a, just there's equally as many women in the world that that stand up for these principles as men. It's not a oh, definitely, definitely, and we need the divine feminine, and that that's well, that the, is, the signs of the times right now. We need the divine another, feminine energy. Yeah. Did you ever hear of the uh, lady by the name of Grace Wade Boggs in Detroit? She was. Uh, she, I don't think so. Grace, I don't think. Grace Wade Boggs. Yeah, she was really uh, instrumental in the civil rights movement and an mm. activist and a revolutionary. And she would. She she as she as she aged and grew, she became much less militant. And as time went on, mm-hmm. the revolutionary became evolutionary. And, mm-hmm. and yeah. you know, uh, let's let's be. Uh, you know, let's uh, let's let's build a new world. Don't worry about destroying the one that exists. You know. Yeah. And, uh, well, that's that's what what aging can do. It can just yeah, be she's a, a more she's, well-rounded person and with perceptions, and not just going out and fighting. You know, and just Grace, being Grace a, is one of my uh, female female heroines, and uh, Grace yeah. Wade Boggs. You you can Google it. Uh, and she, her history uh, is is just it's a profound, you know, it's prophetic. Her life, how how one goes from a, a, a you know, a zealous youth to a, a wise elder, you know. What is the last name? Could you could you spell out her last name? Boggs, B as in boy, O G G S. 
Okay. Grace, Grace, Grace Boggs. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I haven't heard of her, so I can I can look well, her up. She, she she was in Detroit, and she was up in a up. Uh, uh, she was instrumental in organizing when Detroit fell apart. She was really mm-hmm. instrumental in organizing uh, organizing community gardens. You know. Oh, that's and, that's really good. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so she's uh, she's a, she she. she she turned from a revolution a revolutionist to an evolutionist. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, there's been quite a few that have mellowed with age like that. Maya Angelo. I I didn't know too much about her, but and she passed away last year. But she seemed to be yeah. quite a quite yeah. a um, extraordinary woman and so wise. Yeah, well, you know, you you kind of judge people by the company they keep, and I, I you know, uh, when I look at uh, Oprah, she always surrounds herself with really, mm-hmm. really quality people with quality yeah. ideas, you know, and uh, that doesn't happen. You can't do no, that unless you're yeah. sincere at heart. What I've seen of her, you know, I haven't seen a lot of her shows because I haven't had TV. But what and I I did see I did see a DVD about a lot of what she'd done, you know, and it looked like she just really had a big heart and and good intentions and even using her affluence, you know, and her fame to to uh, for good. You know, she's I put her in this category as uh, the Gates the Gates uh, family, you know, Bill and Melinda, uh, they they. Uh, they really are an example of being, uh, you know, if they, they, they use a phrase, if if you're given more, then more is expected of you. You know, you got you got you're supposed to do something with with that largesse mm-hmm. and surplus. Well, if they, you know, they they're here with a mission, you know, yeah. in their soul, and they and they just and we all have that. You know, but some are, you know, really, really in the public eye, you know, and they come here with a purpose, and hopefully they find out that what their purpose is and don't get so swept up in, in their fortune, fame and fortune, and just, you know, the material lives that they just forget why they're here. I mean, of course, some of them are just they're there to do that and be the be the power mongers but, but other people that other people that have fame and fortune are perhaps here to, to do good, you know, and to use that fame and fortune to do good. Yeah. And we can think it, like some of yeah. It runs across the uh the whole uh spectrum of the populace, you know, they're and mm-hmm. I it, well, I love a wasp when they when it when it clarifies things you can boil people down and really put people into two categories and that's it's kind of bizarre but in reference to they're, they're either builders or destroyers you know mm-hmm. and uh you know the positive or there are negative and and uh and that and it's very true you know there are people that try that look at the situation and say well we can do something you know uh and then and the others they are oh, there's you can't do anything with this it's always going to be this way and uh mm-hmm. And that's that's the difference. Yeah, well, they they don't have the vision. They they're they're not the visionaries. But it, it's interesting how. I so say many, they're just. It's yeah. an unfortunate imbecility of spirit. They're just not blessed with the Creator's light. That's the greatest mm-hmm. gift there is, you know, to be able to see, you know, and uh, and that's 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 a gift. And and the and the thing of it is. The, the ones that are blessed I have the have the responsibility of helping those that aren't. You know, and that's where the forgiveness comes in. And love right. your enemy. And the light you know, some are just so uh jaded by by life and the material on this world that they they might have had the, the light at one time but it kinda gets covered up and buried and they all need help. I mean, I mean, we we the lighter we can be, the more that others can see it and perhaps be inspired by it. Let's see. Yeah. Some other people come on come on the call. If anybody that came on the call would like to speak now, 
It's like that's two. me. Hi, hi guys. Elizabeth. I had a feeling you were here. <laughs> I just, I yeah. just with uh, you know, nowadays the universe, whether you want it or not, and notice in your own life, is pushing us to the moment of now every moment. Hmm. So yeah. your days are all goofed up. You're not. You can't be in your regular routine. I guess the best uh, mover and shaker is drama in our life. The drama, <laughs> drama. Yeah. yeah. And well, uh, well, that we had that discussion, Elizabeth. You know, and that's and that's why I get it, uh, that pushing you that that, I, that you call it, uh, and uh, that's why I, I have an interest in the in the political situation. I I, I, I want to see that creator pushing. You know, this 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 all this. Using the power of momentum, uh, the, uh, the creator's momentum to to, to really, uh, he, uh, you know, maybe I'm uh, in, a, in a few, but I, the, the more push, the better. <laughs> yeah, here's the phrases. Here's the phrases I've been using every day. Go with the flow. Tell tell yourself, go with the flow. Tell uh-huh. yourself, tell yourself, it's okay. Whatever situation it is, it's yeah. okay. It's okay, and. Another one is, uh, I am safety, I am abundance, that, that I am as never before. The phrase as never before means that you're not going to look at the past, which has programming all over it. You're not going to look at the future, which has programming all all over it. It's as never before, because all things are possible, and, and, yeah, so anyway. Yeah, it, it, well, it, it, in the now, in the, on the present now, I guess I'm saying. Yeah, well, gee whiz, I mean, this we've been talking about. Well, what was your whole conversation tonight in a nutshell? What was the topic? Well, you, you kind of inspired me last night when I, you know, we were talking about how old I was and all that, and I, I was thinking, well, gee, I'm an eight, I'm an elder, <laughs> and and there's so many issues surrounding older people and you know, and and how older people are treated in the society and all that. So I, I just had the idea to, to talk about just, you know, honoring elders and better ways of, you know, better ways of having elders cared for, you know, and, and of course the community is the, the best way. But, you know, that... It's it's talk about, it's, that. it's, that's a unity. We're unifying the generation, this generation with the former generation, all of us together can make yeah. a difference if we work together. Absolutely. We all have the wisdom of our each generation. Yeah. That's what we, yeah, we were, we were discussing that about the, you know, all the generations together, the different life, you know, different life stages. And then the fact that all the people often don't want, you know, to be inundated all the time with kids and stuff. And I can relate to that and get, have our space, but we can so, still have a family. We, the family's still there, yeah. The, the, I just start just got done listening to Franco Di Nicolo. He did a show back in July of this year, and um, uh, so you know it's very important to, to to just keep telling yourself, go with the flow. It's okay, and just working on your inside when you feel stressed out or whatever, and let it let go and. Let go, and what's the other one? Yield and surrender. Lots of things. Just work on your own heart as experiences around you. Uh, Franco, it was called the ET experience, and I'll share more later. But uh, he commented that 2017, we're going to be fully in fifth dimension. So fifth dimension mm-hmm. is not materialization. No, you know, we are loving this, and there's no fighting, no drama, and there's no mm-hmm. uh, hating people. Uh 2017, fifth dimension, and in 2018, we better well get used to that because 2018, here comes some more upgrades, big time, more Whoa. after five. So, yeah. Hey, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, it's it, it's great that we can all handle it, and that's how, I mean, some probably can't handle it, but. It's just, well, it's but see, we can all handle it. We can all handle it. All we have to do is make the decision to work on ourselves. Don't worry about anybody in the world. Don't worry about anybody around you. Just kind of be your own counselor. 
go to counseling every day, <laughs> a couple times a day yeah. with yourself, and as you change, your world will change around you. Right. Yeah. yeah. We can, we're responsible for for ourselves, certainly. You know, and when when we got friends around us that are going through tremendous stuff, which I do at times, you know, they're just being affected well, by, you know, I can't always discuss all of these these issues with them, but we can do the best we can to be in our in our own centers. Anyway, yeah, that, that's just, I, I, I've just been noticing people, you know, people it, really. You know, it, it, what's, yeah. what's exciting to me is, that, and, and I'm just going to use one example of in one area, but it's all happening in many areas. Before we we used to mention the fact, well, I'm a vegetarian, and they look at you like we're from Mars. And uh, uh, and now people say, well, gee, have you got any good recipes? Uh, and, mm. and you know, that's it's it's just a whole different environment, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I want to just, if you guys just mention really quick, commercial break, uh, the special pioneering bringing the ETs in with their voices and their own language or ship sounds test call pioneering test call is coming up soon guys. So if you want to be a part of it, I already know who's going to, who's already wants to be a part of it. I'll be contacting you hopefully this week and letting you know the details. Okay. And Dale, and, I'll call you. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll be prepared to, uh, uh, you know, do, do the, do the thing and, and be a part of that. And let me just give the number out to call me to be a part of that. Seven, six, three, Six seven zero nine one two zero seven six three. Uh, what did I say? Six seven zero nine one two zero. All right. Okay. Got it. <laughs> and I'll I'll repeat that for everybody's benefit. Six one two area code. No seven six three. Seven six three. Yeah, that's what I, I wrote. Wrong, 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 wrong. Okay. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Area code seven six three. Six seven zero nine one two zero. You got it. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's good. Okay, and then there's a. Uh, I I'm gonna blog it on the blog tonight. I have to work nights tonight. But uh, Pete Santilli, an update on the Hammond Ranch, right? That we got an oh. intel last night on Monday's call. So if you guys haven't listened to it, it'll shoot. It'll be up on the blog, or you can uh, uh, listen to it now. It's reference number three. What did I say last night? Three forty-seven, but on the on the recorded line. And uh, yeah, apparently, so. let me just tell you on this seven-minute YouTube, Pete Santilli's down there with the Hammond Ranch, and you'll have to get the detail. But he went in to get a Verizon hotspot to film to uh, to film, you know, independent people, you know, instead of the mainstream media. Well, as soon as he walked out of the shop and he went back in to get something, the girl that he had built a relationship with said, hey, he just walked out and then walked back in. An FBI agent called her and said, did Pete send until he get a new phone number or something like that? So the FBI, they're trying to shut down, uh, you know, truth or media. And then another guy came up uh, that's with him and said that he took pictures down there at the Hammond Ranch and they're all black. So they have technology to black things out. So oh, yeah. I want to work on that subject with Galactivizing on Monday, amongst others. Maybe Wednesday when Chris is on. But just wanted to do that update. Yeah, I did hear that last night. I didn't. So when you guys, when you hear stories like that, when anybody brings stories in there, don't think, oh my god, oh my god, in your mind. Let's recreate this. Just get excited. It could be the love revolution starting and. Have thoughts it, like that when you hear bad things, yeah. You know, I, uh, in, in the OWASP, it says that they will do everything under the sun to try to hold this thing together, but it, 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 everything is going to fail. You know, it's, it's, it's just all on quicksand, and uh, and they, they're frantically trying to hold on to this and, and make it work, and whatever, whatever, whatever they do to try to prevent it and censor it, it's it's the, the the genie's out of the box, you know. Uh, well, it's. I'm excited. I was listening to Franco Di Nicolo, and others have said, and we know the ETs aren't here to be our saviors. They're not here to help us completely. They're just, you know, they're here. They've intervened a nuclear thing, nuclear nukes, which would have went off and we would have been all gone. But they intervened in that. 
But I am excited that we have somehow, (laughs) uh, the Diamond Network is working with our galactic friends, working with, we're co-creating in the spiritual realm, with the law of one, so we put things in the highest good of all concerned. And that is really having an impact. Think about that, guys. It's really having an impact. We're That's not waiting powerful. to meet the ETs. We're we're working with them now. Thank God for Chris and others. You know. Yeah, and and it's good that they they aren't placing themselves as worshipful or anything like that. Even though there are a lot of pretty well known um, names out I, there. It, I think know. the key, Elizabeth, is, and, and it's not here, is, is is we have to remain proactive, enthusiastic, and enthusiastic, and keep at it. You know, and persevere. You know, so, and, and, so you guys vo- on Voices from the Alternative World, you talk a lot about community and commune living together and working together. That's actually what we're building with the Galactics right now. We're working together, right, guys? Oh, yeah, a universal community. Yeah. It's, it's or, uh, uh, what you say, organic uh, uh, good works, working together in this world mm-hmm. and the next for the benefit of everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and and tonight's program, yeah. basically, uh, Elizabeth was was about our elders, both both in this world and the next. Now, how how we have to depend on them for the for their wisdom to guide us, you know, and, yeah, uh, when yeah. we're so yeah. we're open to it. Well, well, you know what? We depend on them, and Franco just confirmed the book I'm reading on Thursday, every other Thursday with Candy, Sunshine Before the Dawn. He said there's about a dozen ET species that our DNA we were created from a 12 different, a dozen or so ET species. So we're all ET, we're all ETs and we're, we're the humans mm-hmm. are like a mixture of 12 different ET mm-hmm. tribes, you know? Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah we were quite a, quite a mixed soup of DNA from all over the universe, I guess. <laughs> we're, we're quite a motley, motley group. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're call, we just call on all the wisdom of the ages to, Assist us in our task at hand, you know. Yes. So, and he also, which he also confirmed when he said that, um, you know, he talked about the UFO sightings in the air and some other things I'll bring on Monday. But he also confirmed that, you know, they're doing that uh, just to get us used to them, you know, little sightings, and they do little test runs too. And mm-hmm. to see how much fear is in there and all that. So that's actually what we're doing on Diamonds Network. We're getting the world used to our galactic brothers and sisters, and and there's many dimensions and here on Earth, and they're they're boots on the ground too. There's people that are, well, we're all ETs, but there's anyway. I don't know. Yeah. So. Yeah, we we got to get this to the point that uh, you know people are running out of their uh, running into their front yards with their shotguns firing off rounds. <laughs> right, because he commented yeah. all the movies of the ETs, aliens, all their are bad. Mm-hmm. So the confirmation of the re- real reality show that we're going to have with, like, just picture, a family, a journey of a family that um, is opening up, awakening, and they're doing esoteric stuff, they're meditating, and they run into, you know, their third eye opens, and then they they <laughs> ETs, and eventually the story goes on where they're uh, – you know, having picnics together and all that stuff and doing adventures together on this real reality show. I mean, and that will get people, the whole world used to it, right, too? Isn't that cool? Well, there's, there's been a proliferation of stories that uh, about the paranormal and the, and the spirit world and, oh. and these these uh, people that are actually investigating and, and finding uh, these, these, uh, these beings and helping them to uh, to ascend or, or evolve, you know, that there's actually a, a, a healing of a house and a, and a, and a uh, you know, a purification process so that the, 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 the whoever passed on and is in distress is, it gets into a, some, a stage of normalcy where they can, where they can, uh, you know, go on to a higher level. And, uh, you know, so it's, 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 it's just like vegetarianism. The idea of, of uh, an afterlife is is really being taken seriously, and it, and, and that that idea is growing, you know, and, and it's in keeping with what you said about 
you know, there, there's a gradual process and a, you know, like an introduction, a hop, well, hello, how are you? And, uh, you know, like a meet and greet sort of beginning, you know, and, um, you yeah, know, the, the, eventually it'll just, it'll, it'll be normal, you know, it'll be the normal state of things instead of something strange. Hmm. Have you been seeing, and this could be just something that she's doing, but, you know, there, there's been some articles out there about Hillary Clinton um, talking about UFO disclosure. I've seen these on um, Facebook. I, I, if, if she has, she's probably done it in close. I haven't ever heard of her publicly speaking out about it. Uh, you know, uh, I think... Uh, the science is, is becoming more and more convinced. The conventional understanding is that they're, they're you know, they, they're in agreement uh, of sorts that there are actually UFOs, and they're they're starting to publicly admit it. And now now it's just a matter of well, okay, well since these things exist, then we before we make a declaration, we got to actually find out what they are. So you know, I'm I'm in favor of taking a scientific approach with this because. It, uh, it's got to it's got to make some common sense, and there's a lot of there's a lot of malarkey out of there uh, malarkey out there that people are just profiting off of nonsense, you know, and um, selling books and spreading uh, uh, you know hearsay, and that that you know that's just a part of it, but it doesn't change it doesn't change the facts, you know, and uh, so it's a it's a, like I say like Elizabeth said it's an evolving process. And it's and it's gradual, but it's gonna it's gonna happen it's gonna happen gradually pretty quickly. <laughs> well, yeah, the real truth of what it is, you know. I know, yeah, there are a lot of people. I I listen to Coast to Coast a lot and hear all the people that come on there and they talk about aliens and all kinds of things, you know. And some some of them have some. They're kind of out in left field, you know, or right field, or. <laughs> but others, I, when they talk about the real issues about um, what's on the planet and, and everything, Somebody, can come in, come come in or, uh, hello, hello. <laughs> Here I am. Okay, yeah, I cut thought, off. Something cut off. Oh, oh, okay. Dial back in. And All I right. think the great, the great thing about the, the really fantastic thing about this is when when this really becomes accepted as well, this thing is real. It's going to get everybody's attention. I think we think that we're, uh, when when we're actually in a position of being helpless in response to it, that it's going to change change the general tone and the attitude. You know that we're going to start. We're going to you know stop carping about how great and powerful we are and start asking, well, gee, uh, uh, what do I need to know to be a part of this and understand it? Well. You guys understand, please don't beat yourself up. It's coming naturally. That is coming naturally in us. But we have a part to play in it. There's a push, like a push. Yeah. And that's why I say stay in the now when you practice going into yourself and taking care of you, counseling yourself and changing and practicing a way that doesn't feel, com- uh, doesn't just feels odd, which is, but it's a natural way. And you keep practicing it then. That helps, but we're going there anyway, you know. But the people yeah. that don't want, the people that don't want, there're going to be a lot of. There's going to be people that don't want that don't want to. They don't even know they don't want to, but they're still wanted experience on Earth like this, so they'll continue their experience, but on a less oppressive well, uh, some, some, place. Some people are just more amenable to change, you know. Some people are very, very resistant to it. And they're resistant to new ideas, and I think those uh, it's going to be a little difficult for them to those those types of people to uh, to go through this. And uh, you know that's that's a learning process. You know, we're on the last you're... stage. We're on the last stage, and once we're fully in the fifth dimension, which last time there's a little bit of three three dimensional people. There's some three dimensional that most are in four dimension, and then some are going in fifth dimension, different places. But when we're fully in fifth dimension, there's going to be a point, a cutoff point, where okay, you know, some people they still want to, they still need to experience this because they still want to grow, and they and they'll they'll stay in a place like we're here now, and yeah. the rest will be 
in that well, fifth dimension. Both. And area in both places are good. There's no, you know, it's it's all good. Yeah. Well, this is this is, uh, and and oddly enough, uh, uh, you know, it's just like the higher consciousness has has to lift the lower consciousness. We're we're, we're going to be responsible to help them to to grow and understand and uh, and and get to the point where they can be a part of it. You know, uh, you know, I don't I don't see isolationism. I just see interaction and and aiding and assisting uh, in their growth and transition. You know, it's uh, it's not going to be a conflicting uh, thing. It's going to say. Oh gee, oh, it's going to be we're we're going to be like the Red Cross. We're going to all oh, those are really good people. And they help us a lot, you know. And, and, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, that's that's. So uh, when you think of the whole scheme of things, okay, I'll ask myself and I'll answer, and then I'll ask you to think of this. When you think of the whole scheme of things here on Earth, us being asleep and programmed, and and us waking up now in this golden age, so the whole scheme of things. What are the what are some of the biggest pillars? What's number one, number two, number three pillars that need to come out to wake up to help humanity wake up? To me, the two biggest pillars are awakening to that we've been in a slave, we've been put in a slave state and programmed on purpose, and the other pillar is that we have other beings that we've co-created with naturally on earth and other planets and we we don't we don't even have a clue about that you know it's just yeah so those are the two biggest pillars for me what do you guys think sunny you want to uh, well i i would tend to agree and in just the echoes of we're always talking about oneness and we're all one and so the idea yeah the, the idea of awakening to how we've been controlled all this time. That could be very scary for a lot of people, but it has been a gradual process for many of us. And and universal compassion for all of life, you know, the feeling of connectedness so that we no longer treat other beings, you know, like they're treat them badly, like they're separate, you know, and and, and treat our earth like like it's we can just Lord over everything. Uh, you know that's that's a big deal for me. To, I think the consciousness raising of of oneness of all of life. You know, which which ties in with everything else. You know, ties in with knowing about our connections with the rest of the universe and all our brothers and sisters everywhere. And the, those those that have that consciousness, they they are the ones, of course, that, that we are wanting to connect with, of course, we're sending our our love and the law of one to all the other ones, and a lot of them seem to be changing their ways. So, anyway, that's <laughs> that's what I what I have to say about that, I guess. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, well, 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 you know, my, the two pillars, the, the really the, the the two things to me that are really really going to make uh, the difference and a change in our in our spirits is when the the supremacy of ideologies and religions is removed and all of the things that are practiced on earth are strictly uh, boiled down to a matter of choice you know that that specifically the, for instance. Uh, in the, in the, the gestalt in the uh, Roman Catholic Church that, you know, there are such things as w- righteous wars that God blesses and supports to, in defense of Satan and evil. And, you know, you have two big religions that which comp- comprise about three or four billion people on earth. You know, you got the the Judeo-Christian and you've got the uh, the, the Muslims. And and once you dissolve, take that cancer out of that out of the religion, and and just get down to love, un, unconditional love for our fellow man, then you you've established peace. So it's it's really it's just oh, really the, the uh, removing uh, be, uh, belief of an of a specific idea from the from the the you know it's like a structural weakness in a building that prevent that's going to guarantee that it's going to fall. You know, 
And and so to create peace, these religions have to really just shed themselves of that of that thought, and and then just practice what they you know love your neighbor, love your enemy, love love everything, love your creator, love you know just unconditional love. And okay. Then, and then the other one is in the yes. secular world, uh, in, uh, getting getting uh, eliminating the idea that we are predisposed genetically to be uh, uh, aggressive, violent creatures. And I think the intentional community, by, by the more the intentional community grows and says, Man, none, of, none of these thousands of communities want to have any violence, they don't have any crime, There's, they don't have people injuring each other. So it's not human nature, and they always quote, quote Darwin. As the authority, and that that's a rationalization for you know why why the powerful uh, 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 prey on the uh, on the weak uh, because that's that's the natural order of things. So I said those those two ideas have to be removed from from the gestalt of human beings to to, to get to get free free from tyranny and 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 violence and war. And crime and poverty and all the things that are that, that are uh, that, you know the the church is the poor will be all, always be with you. Well, yeah, if you if there's righteous wars and and man's inherently prone to be violent, yeah, they will be with you. But that's false. So yeah. removing those those falsehoods from the from the from the body, from the from the heart and the soul. And, and how spirit. do we do that? We how do we do that with you know places like the Diamond Network and all the other places? The strategy. So I have a question. Yeah. Well, the strategy, I, I would say, full speed ahead. You do it with yeah. uh, education, we're and you do it, it with information, and you and you yeah, do it, it. With, with with truth. You know, and yeah, we're and, doing and, it. And, and so the reality, the reality is is going to be gradual, and as as the reality conflicts with their with with their belief, then and they everybody once the truth is revealed, everybody has to conform to it. It's like yeah. saying, yeah, the world's round. It's they not they either conform or they don't. And then if they don't, they still need to have, they want to have experience well, to I grow just, in I, a I, world like this. And I have a question point, when you're done. Okay. At a certain point, at a certain point, though, that it's so overwhelming that they just, they said, yeah, you're right. You know, some, it's, it's stubbornness, you know, uh, it's, and that's all it is. It's stubbornness. Well, it's programming. And, it's the program yeah, well, that, that we had coming off. Well, yeah. You know, the Waspy says that's one of the seven deadly sins, is stubbornness. You know, refusal to accept the reality. You know, refusal. Uh, okay. To accept the yeah. Uh, let's, let's, let's take our little child heart and let's imagine now. Uh, one of the Galactics said on one of the shows that when we see the Catholic religion fall, that's when, you know, like the financial reset will be close. So let's imagine how – I'm just wondering now – how would you guys imagine? How would the Catholic religion fall? What would what would happen? Uh, let's get I, Dale and Sonny, and then I'll answer. I, I well, the thing that is, uh, there's so much good in the religion. I just want to remove the sickness. So I don't. I think mm-hmm. I think the the pillars of love and forgiveness and tolerance and patience and all those things and charity. I think those are those are qualities we don't want to we don't want to, that, that to fall. <laughs> No, want- but how would you think it would fall? I think okay, the Pope, this Pope now that we have, what was he was put in in an unusual way in the first place, and we all know the Vatican has a telescope and they know about ETs and all that, and it's a Catholic religion. I think the Pope's going to announce that we have other life beings <laughs> around this earth. I don't, and that will take the bad part out of. It'll take a big adjusting in the Catholic realm. Oh, cat scratch me. Uh, oddly wow. enough, oddly enough, just on that note, I've uh, I, you know I, I've got a Pope uh, letter written for the Pope, and I'm going to send him a book. If you if you want to, I can read it to you. It's just going to take a second. It's in my, it's on the. I got to bring it up. Yes. On the last one. Maybe that letter. Maybe that letter will uh, trigger the Pope to do his yeah. disclosure. I mean, who knows, right, Sonny? You know. I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, this Pope to yeah, he's, this is from my heart, and, and from a background of being a political activist. So, uh, you know, my my position with him, it's a little harsh, but it's it falls in the framework of gentle persuasion. You know, because I'm really 
I'm really uh, asking for him to look at himself and and, and consider a change. And he seems to be yeah, changing things from the inside out and gradually and slow, you know, slow enough so not to not. I can appreciate you may not agree with everything in the letter, but I, I, I and I can appreciate that. But it, this comes from a lifetime of uh, activism and a, being mentored by a by my uncle. So and he's not here, and he probably. He'd probably edit the letter, but I think, for what, for my understanding and the way I see it, it's appropriate. You know, I just got to get it up here. Just be patient with me for one second. Yeah, because the, you know, that, that I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get peace on earth. You know, I'm one of those pushers. <laughs> I want to get peace on the earth as, as sooner rather than later. If if I can if I can do anything to make it happen, you know? Well, Dale, you just gave me a stronger vision of what I saw in, I, I drink Chowa ch- ch- tea and it's an old ancient Chinese tea. I got it from Cynthia told us about it. And you put it in lukewarm water and it's a powder and you pour it in and it makes a pitcher for you. Well, right before I left my, lost my apartment, I did that and I saw the Fab Four me sitting on a chair and they were pushing me. Well, we know what the push is now, pushing me into the now moment, all of us. So go ahead. Okay, well, you would appreciate this. I, I'm just at the point where I'm going to be able to get to my email now. Okay, mm-hmm. here we go. Takes me a minute to. Uh, I'm not. I'm not real swift on on this, mm-hmm. but I, I get there in my own good time. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. We should be accessing it here shortly. I'm getting closer. Okay. Uh, something happened there. Just give me once again. Sometimes I got to do this twice. And the nut behind the wheel's loose. I got to fix it. Okay. Uh, hold, hold on one second, ladies. I, I got to use both hands. I want to put the phone down. Give me a second. Well. About the Catholic Church falling, <laughs> I I guess the um, the inner teachings, the the real teachings that's supposed to be ascribed to Jesus, you know, the which is all good stuff, but everything else was orchestrated by the popes in the Middle Ages and way back then for patriarchal control. So that all of that just I believe just needs to come. I mean, many many people are are aware of that now. Of course, that that that's was the church is just set up as a control mechanism. Even though it it still did good and it does more good now probably than back then with all the crusades and the you know witch burnings and all of that kind of stuff. It's easy to really feel really badly about all that stuff, especially as a woman or as a somebody who's if they were persecuted by the church at some point. So Okay, just, uh, here, here I go. I've, I've got okay. it. Uh, and it says, uh, Dear Pope Francis, Francis, all are served by vigorous dialogue that provokes thought and stimulates growth. The substance of my letter to you is that our shared desire for peace must be demonstrated in our thoughts and behavior as well as our prayers. I believe the primary reason that our world is unable to achieve peace is the world's religions have misconstrued our freedom of choice with our Creator's will. And like, uh, I'm, I'm going to be scrolling all along here, so okay, I'm going to pause for just a second and scroll forward. Sonny, could you star six while Dale's reading because I can oh. hear breathing. That's okay. Okay. Uh, the creator, creator's will, insofar as the freedom and tolerance of choice is... Okay, hold on. I got I, I didn't... I scrolled down too far. Hang on. Just a minute. Okay. A, a major step forward and the effort to establish world peace was the declaration by the world's religions 
at the Congress of Conscience that the individual's conscience overruled any tradition or doctrine of any church or religion. The astounding feature of this declaration is that in all matters concerning every individual, it is the exclusive right and responsibility of that person to follow the direct inspiration of the creator, even if it conflicts with the tradition, ceremony, or doctrine of any church or religious belief. And i got to do some more scrolling here. Let's see. Okay. Okay, now just just a second. Okay. The individual conscience overruled any tradition or doctrine of any church or religion. The astounding feature, of course, is you know matters concerning every individual. It is it is the exclusive right and responsibility of that person to follow the direct inspiration of the Creator even if it conflicts with the tradition, ceremony, or doctrine of any church or religious place. Now i got to, okay, just one second. This computer is just not... I got my scrolling thing is not finally religious order is in step with the creator's will insofar as the freedom and tolerance of choice is concerned this is a monumental step forward However, there remains an 800-pound gorilla in the sanctuary, the sacredness of life, the sacredness of all life. Uh, Is everybody still there? Yeah, we're here. Okay. Uh, You know, this is the 800-pound gorilla, the sacredness of all life. If we continue to live... uh, to live in this quagmire of laws written by corrupt, unprincipled rogues who quarrel endlessly over the right to take life and when it is legal and when it is not, peace will be impossible and the church's doctrine will be correct. One second, I, I'll do this. I, I got it right now. Still working on it, Dale? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, war, crime, and poverty are God's will and are to remain so in perpetuity. If that is the case, let Darwin reign. God doesn't exist or has abandoned the planet Earth and left us to make of it what we will, like an absentee slumlord. May the best gangster win. We are free to choose which alpha to follow and the method of our execution. Trump and laser guided smart bombs or ISIS and machetes. And then I gotta scroll again. I've got control a little better. Dale, are you just picking certain yeah, parts I, of it to read? I can't, that I can't, what you're understand. Doing? I can't understand what here, let me try something else. Here, hang on a second. It's just it it's really strange. Because Well, just keep working on it. Anyway, I like how people 
like you write letters to all the officials. That's that takes a big heart. So thanks for doing that. Yeah, I think Dale's written Obama pre- uh, letter and others too. Yes, I believe he did. And tomorrow night is a. Uh, an hour later now, you guys, and uh, instead of 7.30 Central, it's 8.30 Central. Uh, Can- Candy and Chris will be on. I'll be on tomorrow show. Chris has got something to, something that happened <laughs> on another show that he did, which was really good, and I'm not going to spoil the surprise. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to it. should be interesting. It always is with him. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, here's my here's my uh, chore for the week. I'm gonna get this converted, this letter converted to a single sheet of paper that I can, and I'll read it at the beginning of the show next week. Okay? Because it's it's, it's uh, for some strange reason maybe. Sounds so, uh, Yeah. And I, I, I'm not saying it's a coincidence. Uh, there may be a mischievous uh, mischievous right. afloat. Put here, so I, yeah. I'll get it in a form on a letter so I can I can read it so it's it, you know it flows properly. But okay. it, it, it goes in, it goes into great detail about you know that it truly he it, it's a matter of of his conscience you know that he's it's a, I'm not trying to influence him one way or the other, but I am confronting him with with if he's going to pray for peace, then let's do what we have to do to make it happen. You know. Uh, uh, and, and not just not just all smoke and the holy water, you know. <laughs> so uh, anyway, ladies, on that note, next week we got I got, I'll have a really a little surprise, and uh, it'll make it'll it'll be coherent. <laughs> all right. Well, I will say that next week I'm pretty certain that Lynn of Sharon Sharing Gardens will be on, and that doesn't mean you can still read your letter at the beginning of the show, of course. But, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all it's it's really short. It's only it's going to take like five yeah. minutes. It's just yeah. a, you know I'm having a, a technical dif- difficulties right. and uh, yeah. so so it, 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 the scrolling thing is not operating right. And, did and you write uh, one to President Obama or who else did you write one to? Uh, oh, well, I wrote, wrote one to President Obama. I wrote wrote, wrote one to uh, Pope Benedict, and I'm not saying he resigned because he got the book and the letter, but. It, it it just happened at the same time, a coincidence. And that was basically, that letter was about, uh, you know, the problem he had with pedophilia. And I explained, you know, if you, if you, if you go against Mother Nature, uh, you know, uh, there, there, there is a natural celibate state that is a, as a, as a result of, of birth. You know, you're born, born that way, that you're asexual. You don't have any sexual desire. And that's, that's a normal, natural thing. But, you know, to wave a wand and say, okay, you, you now are celibate, uh, uh, and then, you know, take all these young men and put it, and then it's just like prison. You know, the homosexually is rampant in prison because, you know, the, because men are men, and, uh, you know, and, that, and, and, and nature's nature. So what you should, what they, what they need to do is, that, that's, that's another thing. That's a matter of choice, to get married and have children and, you know, or or to partner with the, somebody of the same sex, it's it, that's part that's under the venue of freedom that the Creator gives gives everybody, you know, and uh, so anyway, that's that that was another letter, but and then then, then I haven't uh, you know I got the letter composed, but I've got to get it in uh, on letter form and then get uh, get a hold of Carl and get a hold of that one of those screen copies of Waspy, and. Uh, and then I'll send this up because you know you you keep praying for peace and praying for peace and praying for peace and praying for peace. What are you doing to make peace happen? You know, that's a, it's a it's a demonstrable act. You know, you have to be you're either proactive uh, uh, against war or you're you're, a, a, you're you're complicit in it. You know, one of the one of the, there's no there's no neutral ground. You know, and they've got a. They, they, they got, they've got a whole doctrine written about righteous wars that, mm-hmm. uh, is, that supports, uh, you know, okay. killing, and then that's got to oh, be. Have, yeah, they need to change those doctrines. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Need, uh, like the rest of us, 
Like so I'm gonna let of, you guys. I'm gonna let you guys stop the show because I got to go to work. But maybe if anybody oh. wants to come in too, but I'll let yeah. you guys continue. Okay. Give me a okay. call. Thank you. I love you. Guys. Give me a call and so, and so I can we can get set up for the program. Elizabeth. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi. Elizabeth. Hi. Is this Captain? This is Captain. How are you? I forgot to call you back, and now I have to go to work, so I'll call you. Call me tomorrow, will you, in the afternoon? Okay, okay, I'll give you a call tomorrow, and uh, you let me know where you want me to come in, and I'll be more than happy to give you a galactic report of what's going on right now, okay? Okay, sounds great. Guys, meet Captain. This is Sunny and Dale and whoever else the audience is. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello, how are you? We're going to be on the show on uh, the Monday show coming up soon. Yes, I I do have a Monday uh, show. My show is every Monday. Oh, you at, have your own show, yeah. Yes, every Monday at 7 p.m. Central, and it's every Monday. All and right. I give an update and so forth. But, uh, yeah, I, I'll give you a call tomorrow, uh, 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 Elizabeth, and then, of course, we'll make arrangements for the Thursday call, okay? Okay, and if you know when I started Diamonds Network, Captain was one of the one. Me, Captain, and Judy started, or I started it, and I invited those two, and and so mm-hmm. now it's come. Now that that's a good sign. It's coming to completion, a full circle. Oh well, yeah, we're back together. You know, at least talking, and we'll okay. see what we're going to do. Uh, yeah. If you would, uh, if you would, uh, Elizabeth, get a hold of Judy and let her know that I'll be coming back on. Yeah, I will. Okay, great. All right. All right. All right. Give me a call as well, and, and so I, I'm sure that I get on the program, okay? Yes, yes, I, I'll make sure. Okay, all okay. right. Nice, okay. uh, nice uh, talking with everybody, and, and see you next week, same time. Yes, thanks, everyone, for being here and those that are listening on YouTube. And we will see you next week, and when the Sharing Gardens will be guests next week. Oh, Thanks, fantastic. Michael. All right. All right. Yeah. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, I'll push the button then. Okay. All right. Very good. Are you looking for healing or a change in your life to help you enjoy it more fully? You might benefit from a galactic energy reading and clearing from Chris Jacobs. Chris will work with you on a soul level to clear unseen negative influences, implants, programs, contracts, and energetic blocks. Chris Jacobs is a gifted energy healer. Contact him today at ChristopherStephenJacobs at gmail.com.